Ladies and gentlemen, before I get into why Don McGahn is not going to testify, why he should never testify, and why it's going to be very difficult for Congress to get some kind of verdict from the Supreme Court, because I think all of this is going to the Supreme Court. The Mazur's uh, judgment or the ruling the other day from a um, D.C. judge that said that Democrats were, going to u- were acting in good faith and they were going to utilize uh, Trump's financial records to implement laws. I mean, that's absurd. They're doing this to undermine Trump. That's all they've ever done. They ran on Medicare for All. They won't even pass that in a democratically controlled House. But before I get to Don McCann rightfully not showing up, because two years of a Mueller probe led to nothing, two years of media and Democrats promising evidence of collusion with Russia, actual direct contact with Putin operatives and President Trump never panned out because it was all fabricated. I want to get to a gentleman, and we'll, we'll explain why it's fantastic that Trump spent three minutes with Schumer and uh, Pelosi, which is three minutes longer than most Americans could, and left. But this is Making Sense with Sam Harris, number 157. What does the Mueller report really say? I like Sam Harris. I respect his intellect. Very intelligent guy. He prides himself upon on working with fact and reason and logic and certainty. He's made a living pointing out things that are certain and things that are not certain. That's pretty much the basis of his thought process and his philosophy, Sam Harris. This is the basis of the intelligence community. So in this podcast, Sam Harris and I think is. The gentleman's name is Benjamin Witz. Um, they're, they're talking about a pattern of behavior. And I have to bring this up because one of my wonderful subscribers brought, uh, brought this up in the comments section. Sam Harris, with all due respect, is absolutely wrong in trying to say that there was a power, trying to uh, either agreeing with his guest, uh, the guest is wrong, he was wrong, when they try to say, well, the Mueller, Mueller report... Uh, conveyed a pattern of behavior. So there wasn't enough legal evidence, but a pattern of behavior where he obstructed justice. Number one, the entire probe was predicated upon a lack of certainty that anything even happened. There was never evidence that Trump colluded with Russia. That's number one. The probe itself was unlawful. It should never have been um, allowed to take place by Rosenstein. Annex B, estimate of language. I'm wondering what Sam Harris would think of this. This is the, I quote this in my Federalist article, and I would love to debate Sam Harris on the Mueller probe, Trump colluding with Russia, the nonsense and the propaganda, and the fact that this was completely unlawful, filled with illegal acts, They tried to set up and frame President Trump, and they failed miserably. But Annex B of the ODNI report, the Director of National Intelligence report, this is part of one of two intelligence reports that James Clapper referenced when he told Chuck Todd in March of 2017, oh, there's no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. This is what Annex B, estimate of language, I'm wondering if somebody... If somebody was, were to say, oh, well, God exists, how do we know? Uh, because of all the estimative language surrounding it. Estimative language, what, what would Sam Harris say? Estimative language consists of two elements, judgments about the likelihood of developments or events occurring and level of conf- levels of confidence in the sources and analytical reasoning supporting the judgments. Judgments are not intended to imply that we have proof that shows something to be a fact. Judgments are not intended to imply that we have proof that shows something to be a fact. That is also referring to the allegation that Russia hacked the DNC. The U.S. government is even, isn't even certain about that. They believe it took place. People have come to the assessment that, you know, uh, they all agree. The intelligence community is unanimous in its assessment of something they're not certain about. But, but if it was any other issue, if it was theology, no way would Sam Harris say this is a rock-solid 
um, basis to, to form an argument. Judgments are not intended to apply that we have proof that shows something to be a fact. Assessments are based on collected information, which is often incomplete or fragmentary, as well as, lo as, well as logic, argumentation, and precedence. Confidence in the source supporting judgments. Confidence levels provide assessments of the quality and quality of the source information that supports judgments. Consequently, we ascribe high, moderate, or low levels of confidence to the assessments. Nothing is certain. The United States has never certain has never stated with certainty that DNC was even hacked, or certainty that um, Trump colluded with Russia, or there that or that Russia even interfered in the election. There's no certainty because we don't know how many people had their minds altered by Facebook ads nobody saw. There's no there's no data on the number of Facebook ads that swung voters in swing states. She won the popular vote. So it, it's interesting to see. Sam Harris, who is a, a brilliant guy, very intelligent guy, high confidence generally indicates that judgments are based on high quality information from multiple sources. High confidence in a judgment does not imply that the assessment is a fact or certainty. Such judgments might be wrong. Such judgments might be wrong. So when they talk about everything from WikiLeaks to Trump to Trump Jr. to the Russian hacking of the DNC to Facebook ads to a sophisticated plot uh, run by the Kremlin, this is all based on high confidence. Nothing is certain. I explained this in my article in The Federalist. Below, James Clapper knew there was no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion in 2016. H.A. Goodman, The Federalist. That's the Director of National Intelligence. That's the ODNI report. He was privy to the NSA, CIA, and an ODNI, uh, FBI, sorry, FBI information. He had all that information at his disposal, James Clapper, and he still came up with such judgments might be wrong. Even high-confidence judgments might be wrong. Then it goes even further to say, he says, says the following, Judgments are not intended to apply that we have proof that shows something to be a fact. What? Okay, that's just one of the two reports that all of this is based under, is, is based upon. The Department of Homeland Security, and I quote this in my Federalist article, disclaimer, this report is provided as is for informational purposes only. The Department of Homeland Security does not provide any warranties of any kind regarding any information contained within. DHS does not endorse any commercial product or service referenced in this advisory or otherwise. The DHS report and ODNI reports are claims that are not backed up by fact. They are claims backed up by opinion or judgments. That, and the facts that they base these judgments on are incomplete and sometimes fragmentary, or fragmented. It says that in the actual report. So I'm going to play a clip from the Sam Harris um, segment where they talk about, well, you know, there's a pattern of behavior because they just couldn't get to the legal basis. This is why Trump McCann is not even showing up and Trump leaves after three minutes. The issue here is that there was no need, no reason, no justification. There was no need to investigate Trump for two years because the whole thing was fabricated. But let's listen to this. It's unbelievable, too, because I've read the Mueller report. The Mueller report does not... Okay, the Mueller team never interviewed Natalia Veselnitskaya. They never interviewed Joseph Mifsud. They never interviewed Alexander Downer. Why? Those are the three contacts, or two of the contacts directly to Putin... And all the, all the pattern of behavior, and we'll get to this. They talk about a pattern of behavior. This is Benjamin, uh, Benjamin, I believe his last name is Wits, uh, Whites, Wits. And Sam Harris are talking about, well, you know, he really tried to obstruct the investigation. Not one thing Trump did. First of all, there, <laughs> not one thing Trump did actually prevented information from being obtained by Mueller's team because there was no information to be obtained. It's different from when Hillary Clinton deleted 33,000 emails, and it's different from James Comey saying, well, she had special access program intelligence on her servers, but we're not going to tell you how it got there. How did top-secret intelligence 
And if you look at the comments section, you'll see people saying, well, if you think that this is anything close to um, the Clinton email investigation, uh, yeah, the Clinton email investigation was a cover-up, and the Clinton email debacle was the biggest cybersecurity travesty of all time. She had top-secret intelligence on servers outside of the United States government. What do you think happened to them? And we don't know how they got there. And then James Comey said there was no intent. But see, there was evidence of crimes. Even James Comey states when he exonerated Clinton, there's evidence of potential violations of legal statutes. Nobody says there's evidence of violations of legal statutes with, with Trump, not even for obstruction. But let's listen to this. This is why it's so frustrating because you have even really intelligent people like Sam Harris who are completely giving every benefit of the doubt to the biggest propaganda machine of all time, the media slash Democratic Party. This was an egregious abuse of state power. It was deliberately fabricated. There was no basis. And even the two uh, intelligence reports prior to the Mueller probe stated there was no evidence. They're, they weren't certain about every, anything, even the DNC hack, because CrowdStrike is the only entity to look at the DNC service. But listen to, the, listen to this. And strangled in his crib because Correct. He, he, you know, he kept ordering people to do things which they judged to be either, frankly, illegal or not sane. And so it was just, it was really, it was a kind of a halo of insubordination that surrounded the president where he would give orders that were not followed, and it's only because they weren't followed that he hasn't been, uh, well, I mean, that we... Even if he fired Mueller, it wouldn't be obstruction because there was no predicate crime. They were investigating the exist... They were, they were inve investigating the absence of evidence. That is not an investigation. That's a setup. He could have simply fired Mueller after a year and a half because it was two years of nonsense. He could have fired Mueller before the, um, the midterms and said, hey, you know what, give me, your, give me the evidence. Simply because the United States government begins an investigation doesn't mean it's lawful and doesn't mean it's not riddled with illegal acts. James Comey leaked classified memos. That's according to Chuck Grassley. That's a crime. That's a crime. We can go on forever. Clinton committed numerous crimes, major crimes and violations. She was let off the hook with because of intent. And they, they didn't even talk about obstruction. If you want to talk about semantics, um, well, you know, Trump tweeted this and he said this. Um, we now find out that James Comey said that Loretta Lynch told him to call it a matter. He called it a matter. Did they both engage in obstruction of justice? It's a criminal investigation. Why are they trying to tone it down? Why are they trying to repeat exactly what uh, the Clinton campaign was saying? But let's, he also, Sam Harris also makes the assumption that what Michael Cohen said, what um, Don McCann allegedly said, what, what, um, one of Jeff Sessions' staffers said, there's hearsay and gossip pertaining to what Trump wanted to do. So what? He didn't do it. It's not obstruction if he's thinking of doing something. And if people don't, let's just say all those people are correct and they were insubordinate and didn't engage in what Trump wanted. That's still not obstruction of justice. He didn't prevent them from obtaining anything, number one. Number two, there was nothing to obtain, which leads to the fact that this was an unlawful probe. But let's continue. It, it turns out he couldn't be, uh, on Mueller's analysis, convicted of any crime while in office. But we would be talking about, you know, laws being broken had people obeyed his edicts. Even if they obeyed his edicts, it wouldn't be, wouldn't, no laws would have been broken. Let's say... Um, Let's say uh, James Comey, let's say uh, Trump actually told James Comey, hey, lay off um, Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn never did anything wrong. He never committed a crime. He allegedly lied to Peter Strzok. Well, Peter Strzok is, was compromised. Peter Strzok stated, we will stop Trump. We will stop Trump. How is it obstruction of justice for Trump to think something and not, not have it happen? But for an, uh, how, uh, how is that illegal, and how is this not a crime? A law enforcement official, top law enforcement official, number two in the counterintelligence agency, uh, number two in the counterintelligence division of the FBI, actually stating his guilt, uh, stating his motive to, to 
cover up Clinton's crimes and fabricate Trump's. We will stop Trump. Trump voters are smelly. Trump is a menace. Clinton should win mil a million to one. But when he said we will stop Trump in the text message, that was to his lover who said Trump's not going to become president, right? No, we will stop it. We will stop his presidency. But let's continue with this because it's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, and we'll, I mean, we'll get to that when we talk about yeah. obstruction. I actually think on the obstruction stuff, the evidence of actual criminality is is pretty overwhelming. <laughs> but I agree with you to the... I, I, really, what would you think of deleting 33,000 emails, deleting subpoenaed emails, deleting, uh, destroying um, hardware, wiping hardware before you give it to the FBI, calling it a matter and not an investigation, um, having everyone given immunity? Isn't that interesting how nobody talked about uh, people around Clinton flipping and singing? They were given immunity. And Brian Pagliano, by the way, did not show up to his subpoena. And that was an active criminal investigation with a predicate crime and evidence of a crime. So tell, I mean, it's like, it's unbelievable. The standard by which they judge Trump, the standard by which they condemn Trump is not the standard by which they utilize, they, they, they look at Clinton. Clinton can do no wrong. And she's actually committed major crimes. You cannot transfer top secret intelligence outside of the United States government like Brian Pagliano did, whom she paid to transfer. So I would love to discuss this with Sam Harris. Probably would never happen. But if he ever wanted to debate this, I would absolutely love to. Because he is not using the same logic and reason he's known for. He is outsourcing logic and reason um, to kind of utilize the fabricated suspicion the uh, manufactured suspicion against Trump. There was no need for Trump to contact Russians. The Russians, the people that, that allegedly had all, that there was a pattern of behavior. Well, there's a pattern of behavior with Clinton. Money flowing into the Clinton Foundation from Boeing, from UBS, from Uranium One, from, from countries. Uh, uh, during the Haiti, um, when they, uh, Haiti debacle, when they stole raised $10 billion and 3% was given to the people of Haiti, where'd the money go? But every single time from Uranium One to every other transaction of money, transfer of money flowing into the Clinton Foundation, there's a pattern of, oh, gee, what a coincidence, beneficial treatment taking place for the person or entity or government or business corporation that gives money into the Clinton Foundation. They get, a be they get something of benefit. And also Bill Clinton miraculously gets a speaking arrangement, like a 500,000 speaking fee in Moscow. And a, oh, he just, by the way, met with Bill, uh, Vladimir Putin at his home in 2010. Anytime, Mr. Sam Harris, it would be my pleasure to debate you contact Goodman78 at gmail.com. We can go on your channel or my channel. Contact Goodman78 at gmail.com if you'd want to, if you want to debate this. And I'll debate anyone you would like also. If you don't want to debate, if I could debate this gentleman, Benjamin uh, Witts, any I've read the Mueller probe Mueller report also. It's a bunch of nonsense. It's 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 a rehash of the ODNI and DHS reports that makes make grandiose claims without any evidence. Uh, now we're finding out that, hey, you know what? The Steele dossier not only was purchased by Hillary Clinton, CrowdStrike was not only outsourced by Hillary Clinton, but Joseph Mifsud is linked to the State Department. Natalia Vasilinskaya was allowed into the country by um, uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch and President Obama's administration. This is all backed up by, by The Hill, John Solomon, um, public record knowledge. There's nothing, uh, Fusion GPS, let's see, um, not mentioned in the Mueller report. wonder why. But let's continue. The extent it's not even more overwhelming, it's because a lot of things that were demanded to happen by the president were not carried out, and that actually does mitigate. He could have fired Mueller, which would have been uh, under the Constitution. He's more than even Alan Dershowitz stated. He has more than any. He has every right to. And then they would have said, "You're obstructing justice." The president should have simply said, well, where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? This is based on an intelligence community assessment that, that even the assessments itself state 
we have only confidence, we don't have certainty in anything, and there's not even a predicate crime. We don't even know if the Russians hacked the DNC. We have to trust the images giving, given to the United States government by, by CrowdStrike. The conflict of interest there is obviously uh, CrowdStrike was outsourced by the DNC. Do you think that the Republican National Committee, if they outsourced a tech firm to say, oh, yeah, uh, China hacked their servers, that the, uh, the Democrats would believe that? They would put on their thinking caps and say, well, you know what? We want the U.S. government to uh, analyze the servers. Otherwise, we're not going to believe you. Let's continue. To some degree, the obstructive outcome, although not the obstructive behavior. Yeah. So the third area of... There was no... The outcome was a lackluster outcome because there was no predicate crime. There, there's no evidence of anything. And the evidence was an assessment. The evidence was a judgment where they admit there's no certainty on any of the facts. In fact, it's not... There were no facts... There were a series of events that they attributed to Russia where they don't have any evidence. The evidence was outsourced by the Democratic Party. It would be the equivalent of a defense attorney saying, well, here's the safe. And uh, you know what? Actually, here's a copy of the fingerprints of the safe that we have. Um, but, you know, just trust the, the copy of these fingerprints. Then when you have, like, every liberal publication saying, well, it's a widely reputable it's widely believed that the United States government got pristine copies of the DNC servers. Well, so what? That is not the certainty and, and logic and, and reason that Sam Harris prides himself on. But, you know, and he's, he, he's a brilliant guy. I give, it, I give it up to him. Same thing with Ben Shapiro, too. Like, they're both very intelligent individuals, but they're not... <laughs> there is no evidence here. They're trusting the United States intelligence community to to make these categorical claims as if they were based on fact. There is no fact here. There's just confidence to high, high to moderate confidence in a whole bunch of things. Before we get to obstruction, though, the third area is uh, what to me is the most dramatic, which is this, uh, or the most dramatic on the, on, in the volume one set, which is this hundred plus pages of description of the contacts between Russians, government officials, and their intermediaries and people associated with Donald Trump. There are no Russian government officials. The only Russian government official was um, the active Russian intelligence officer, according to Vanity Fair, that helped compile helps Christopher Steele compile the Steele dossier that Clinton purchased by funneling money through a law firm. If anyone colluded with Russia, it was Hillary Clinton, not Trump. And uh, there's, an there's an investigation in the Ukraine now of whether the DNC and Clinton tried to collude with officials there to get dirt on Manafort. Now, if you look and you say, well, gosh, you know, there's so many contacts with Russians. Number one, um, if that's the case, do you think that the Uranium One deal it should be investigated based on Bill Clinton meeting with Vladimir Putin outside Moscow at Vladimir Putin's home. Is that a Russian contact you think uh, would correlate to, um, uh, you know, m ensuring that the uranium deal went through? Oh, well, there's no, there's no uh, uh, evidence that, uh, yeah, okay, but you're, there's no evidence at all. You can look at the DHS and ODNI reports. There's no evidence at all that links Trump to any wrongdoing. Michael Flynn's calls were uh, reviewed. He, there was nothing illicit, no wrongdoing. They got people on process crimes, lying to corrupt FBI agents that just wanted to entrap people. I mean, the sta it's, just, it's unbelievable. The standard by which the standard by which they judge Trump is not the standard by which... Um, they judge Clinton or Bill, Bubba Bill. But let's continue. In the period around the campaign and the transition. And of course, the background to this is that Trump was saying at this time what to anybody who will listen, I have nothing to do with Russia. Right. And he had any way of any number. Yeah, he had nothing to do with Russia. It's true. Just because you speak to uh, Sergei Kislyak. Your incoming national security advisor sir, speaks to Sergei Kislyak. That doesn't have anything to do with Russia. Just because Joseph Mifsud says that, uh, oh, he, 
Alleg- well, first of all, he backtracked. Joseph Mifsud is a character that um, is linked to the State Department, backtracked his initial statement that Alexander Downer allegedly stated regarding Papadopoulos. Alexander Downer was never interviewed by the Mueller team, nor was he, nor was he um, mentioned in the Mueller report. But Alexander Downer is the Australian diplomat that's supposed to have started this whole thing by tipping off the FBI that George Papadopoulos knew of the DNC hack. What? That's not how you start counterintelligence probes. You, the counterintelligence probe is to, is, to, is to counter, to go up against foreign intelligence agencies, protect the country. Make sure that your country is protected, not the DNC is protected. DNC is a private entity. Number one, it cheated Bernie Sanders. It cheated Bernie Sanders in a uh, primary it said was neutral. And then the, the DNC fraud lawsuit that Jared Beck, Elizabeth Beck, and Nico House waged, DNC lawyers said, well, we're a private entity. We could do what we want. Great. So why do you need the U.S. government to, ba- to defend you? If you're a private entity, you could do what you want. Pick any a candidate you want. Cheat Bernie. You know, do whatever you want. Joseph Mifsud, backtrack. He was never interviewed by the Mueller probe, but he was asked uh, – by FBI agents in early 2017, he said, oh, well, you know what? Uh, I didn't really have any contact. Uh, I didn't really tell Papadopoulos anything. So that link to Russia, then, you, I mean, look, th- this gentleman is saying, oh, there's so many links to Russia. Kushner, Mueller report reveals Kushner contact with a pro-Kremlin campaign advisor. So what? So what? It wasn't an active... Russian intelligence officer, like Vanity Fair says, that uh, part of a report, steel dossier that Clinton purchased. Guy runs a Washington think tank, offered advice on Russia policy. So what? How many Russian contacts did Obama have as he was coming in with a Russian reset in 08? Where you have a Guardian article saying, yeah, Vladimir Putin's happy that that Obama uh, is hopefully going to re, you know, renew or reset relations so what how many contacts with china how many contacts with france how many contacts with the uk it's you know it's the height of xenophobia to say well you had russian contacts and uh you know what a steel dossier was used and an alexander downer and then we got a vice of warren on carter page so what how what is this where is the criminal activity here and how is it a criminal act or a suspicious act to speak to people of russian uh, descent or russian citizens so what? So what? Where was the predicate crime? Money actually flowed into the Clinton Foundation from Uranium One, and they say you can't prove anything. Where is the money flow into um, any organization from Trump by Russians who then acquired 20% of U.S. uranium capacity? So here's one example. Mueller report reveals Kushner's contact with a pro Kremlin campaign advisor. So what? That Where's the... Where's the um, evidence of, 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 of illegal activity, but here. There are ways of denying that his campaign had, had contacts with, with the Russians or... Clinton had contacts with the Russians too, all throughout the uranium sale. Like I said, Bill Clinton met with Vladimir Putin at his home, $500,000 speaking arrangement, like he has speaking arrangements all the time. If you look at the DNC campaign emails, he states... Um, one one uh, Clinton Foundation official states that Bill Clinton, there's a Bill Clinton Inc., he enriches himself from, from a networking made from uh, the Charitable Foundation. That's illegal. But let's continue. Uh, and, of course, the press has revealed a lot of these contacts in the past. And- so what? Contacts? Where, where is the illegal activity or even the suspicion with these contacts? They found no collusion. There was no predicate crime linked to Trump. There was no criminal activity linked to Trump. He was never caught in a conspiracy to uh, undermine the United States or con- to conspire against the United States government, which is what 18, the 18371 statute I explained in my, um, my Federalist article regarding why Comey and Strzok and McCabe will all be charged under that statute, the same statute they try to use against Trump. The whole thing was, oh, well, you know what? This was a grandiose endeavor. To defraud the American people. 
by President Trump working with Vladimir Putin to buy Facebook ads and hack the DNC. Well, if that was true, he would hack the DNC to inform the country that Bernie Sanders was cheated and Democrats cheated their own candidate and, and lied about it and said it was a fair and neutral primary. So Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign in disgrace. Then they blame, uh, then they blame Russia for cheating them. But let's continue. And so the fact that they took place is not a particular surprise. The exhaustive catalog of them is truly astonishing. And Why would it be astonishing? The exhaustive catalog of uh, money that Clinton utilized, which is a campaign finance viol violation, to undermine Trump, to purchase a dossier with help from an active Russian intelligence official. This is from Vanity Fair. How Christopher Steele compiled. This is a, a Vanity Fair article. Okay. This is Clinton actually purchased a dossier. And then they say, well, my God, the sheer volume of people. So what? We were not at, they sold, you figure if Obama's administration presided over the sale of 20% of U.S. uranium capacity, golly gee, they might not be um, the Khrushchev, um, Brezhnev, uh, Soviets, Soviet Union that we were so f frightened of. Source B, this is how Christopher Steele compiled the dossier. A quote, a former top-level intelligence officer still active with the Kremlin. Now, what if... Sam Harris and the gentleman he's speaking to read in the Mueller report that that President Trump purchased a document that a former top level intelligence official officer still active in the Kremlin helped compile. My God, do you think they would they would care? Of course they would. Of course they would. But let's continue. And you know, we can go into them in more detail, but it takes literally a hundred plus pages to describe them all. And what Mueller finds is that uh, neither individually nor collectively do they amount to a conspiracy to this joint meeting of the minds as to a criminal purpose. So there you go. I mean, it's right there, and that's that's a momentary use of logic the actual meetings and collectively don't lead to any uh endeavor to conspire or illegal activity but hey this is making sense with sam harris number 157 what does the Mueller report say the Mueller report doesn't say more than it says and i can explain that in any debate but also the big issue here is Mueller's team just like Strzok and Page and Comey and Clapper and Brennan, Mueller's team is composed of anti-Trump anti partisans. And we know this in part because you, you have five of them who gave a, a total of around $40,000 to Democrats. Two of, whom, two, two of the Mueller team was, were given the Steele dossier prior to even the election, which was very bizarre. Very bizarre. So, anyway, I know that this is not exactly directly relating to Don McCann skipping a uh, congressional meeting and, and, and Trump not, you know, me, meeting Schumer and, and Pelosi for three minutes or so. But you have to understand something. When you have a brilliant mind like Sam Harris, who believes this nonsense, or who's lending credibility to this nonsense, without, instead of saying, hey, you know what, let's use basic logic and reason. Why did the, why did the United States of America, why did, the, why did President Obama's administration politicize its, uh, his intelligence agencies to set up and frame President Trump. That's what took place. That's obvious. Using basic logic, that's obvious. Because if you were going to utilize the standard of suspicion against Trump, why not utilize that same standard against Clinton, which actually there are more contacts. Money actually flowed from Uranium One. 
a company uh, owned, eventually owned by the Kremlin, to obtain uranium, where with an active bribery and racketeering scandal um, devised by a Russian official on U.S. soil while it was taking place, who was eventually indicted and sent to prison by Bob Mueller. Oh, gee. Robert Mueller was around when yellow cake uranium was shipped out of the United States of America. This is according to the New York Times. Cash flow to the Clinton Foundation amid Russian uranium deal. But Trump walks out on Pelosi and Schumer three minutes in. Well, of course he does. Of course he does. Because guess what? Um... He demanded the investigations. He demanded the Democrats get these phony investigations over with. And what the president needs to do, what the president needs to do is he needs to start not just with John Durham. Well, I mean, look, he's already started. He knows what's going on. Um, but they're paving the way for Hillary Clinton. She's running again. Hillary Clinton will run for president again. Now they're saying she should have gone on The View. She should have gone on Howard Stern. She is going to run again. She's going to go on all of those shows. And you're going to see they're going to try to humanize um, the, uh, the Golden Moomoo. She's going to lose again. I'm telling you, she's running. And eventually, Comey, Strzok, McCabe, Clapper, Brennan, all of them will get either, most of them or all of them will get indicted. And then lower ranking officials. And then eventually, eventually, because the criminality is just too extreme, Clinton will eventually after she loses the election in 2020. Give me your thoughts below. You want to support my voice long term, my Patreon is below. I am starting a website, defeatingtds.com. It's just based on public record resources. You can defeat any ridiculous statement. Trump is a racist. Trump worked with Russia. Trump obstructed justice. All these things. Give me your thoughts. Thank you so very very much.